on a lark and peeing in the park. You should follow me on Twitter. It's jokes to Carl. That's the duh of Francais, not the duh of dumbass. But never mind that. Don't follow me now. Follow me later. I mean, for right now. Ah, uh, let's watch a full-length movie on you. Hi, welcome to L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Hi, Carl. Hey, Mike. Thanks. Uh, let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube. I'm ready to go. Happy to be back. Carl, what's the premise of our show? Well, long ago, you read uh, a lot about interesting films. You really were a buff for it but you couldn't see them all you could see maybe one or two you know you couldn't run down to the zigfield theater in manhattan when you're 16 <laughs> years old but today's world has youtube and all of that you, it's all at your fingertips now it is all at my fingertips i no longer have to rely on dennis perry's cult movies mm -hmm. book i could actually watch it and then read his commentary and get appreciated more so we watch movies that are on YouTube. Carl, what movie are we watching today? Today we are watching a movie that I saw when I was a kid. It's called Stowaway to the Moon, 1975. Right. So you put in the YouTube search and, yeah, Stowaway to the right. Moon. And I don't think 1975 is in the title. The channel we like is Chris Jackson. Chris Jackson. Now an ad's going to play. Two ads. Two ads will play. You get to skip. So so when you – I'm stealing your thunder here, Mike. When no. you press play, let your ads play and skip them, and then hit pause and go back to zero, zero, zero. We got a little extra homework for you. We want you to first go find Stowaway to the Moon, a 1975 movie, and it's hosted by Chris Jackson. Find it. We are going to hit play, let the two ads go. Once the movie is for real, hit pause and move it to zero, zero. This gives me an opportunity to welcome you to our show. We, of course, stream first right now on mutinyradio.fm as we do every Sunday, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Since 2016, this show has been on every week. Carl, right? right. Yeah. Pat on our backs. Uh, you can subscribe to us on your podcast. And we also have a video podcast version where we actually sync the movie carl does all the work producer carl does everything syncs the movie to our podcast so basically we want you to watch this movie with the sound off and listen to us at the same time or and listen to mini radio and listen to subscribe to our podcast and subscribe to our youtube podcast carl i'm exhausted yeah well uh, you took the opportunity and you let everybody know yes well, I wanted to let everybody know, and of course, you can donate to the station. Go to Venmo and donate at Mutiny Radio. I'm wearing one of their shirts right now for one of their many uh, seventh annual, seven years uh -huh. of their comedy festival that happens in March. Ooh. Wow! Ooh. I, when are they going to? When are they going to stop the festival? It's just it's been going on. <laughs> oh. Mutiny Radio never stops, buddy. We are so. That's a lot of information for you to digest. We are going to want you to hit play once you hear go from our countdown. It's not an ordinary countdown. No. It's a celebrity comedian countdown. Carl Ooh. has also produced a segment where he has talked to a comedian. I have no idea who it is. It's Robin Williams. Uh, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to hear the comedian. And when the comedian says go, press play, and we are ready to roll. Carl, take it away. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Celebrity Comedian Countdown, this time with Jordan Malice. Welcome. Hey, Carl, thanks Jordan. for having me. Absolutely. 
Now, I first started bumping to you out there in co uh, comic comedian open mics, you know, uh, especially at the Rhino in Suffern, New York. Is this home base for you, New York, Hudson Valley? Uh, yeah, right now I'm living in Brewster. I started comedy in Vermont, though. You started in Vermont. Now, you're very new to comedy. How long ago are we talking here? I just hit the year mark uh, in late January. Wow, you are a new bear, a newbie. Okay, so you're past one year by a couple weeks or so. What was in Vermont? College or? Uh, yeah, I went to college there at University of Vermont. Uh, uh -huh. And then after that, I was working there for about a year. And then I moved back home. Uh, this is where I'm from in the Hudson Valley. Yeah, and so you started doing comedy up there. How did you get into comedy? Was it friends that were? Tell me the story of like why it appealed to you and how you start. Why you started? Um, I think that my story is pretty similar to a lot of other people. Uh, where like as a kid, I was a funny fat kid. Um, you know, humor to make up for lack of confidence. Yeah, yeah. And from there, I was always just joking a lot. And yeah, the night I decided to start comedy, uh, a friend of mine, Tom Hanlon, um, who doesn't do comedy anymore, but we play some music together here and there. Um, he was going up at the open mic at the Vermont Comedy Club. And he was like, dude, you got to go up there. And I was like, I don't have anything planned. He was like, just yeah. do it. So we did it, uh, and I went up, and I had a great time, and I was like, oh, I got to keep doing this. I really love the feeling of, you know, making the room pop. So you you didn't go up there with any planned material. So when you were on stage, did stuff come to you that you've always, like the first time I ever did it, I remembered like jokes. Oh, I, if I was a stand-up comedian, I'd say this. I'd say, you know, one from five years back, one from eight years back. How did you riff on the room? What, what did you talk about your first time? Uh, I just, I didn't watch any of, the, any of the other comics perform that night. I went into the bathroom and I just tried to write out jokes. Ah, uh, okay. Either from memory or just something that I had been thinking about during the day. And luckily, they all turned out to be pretty good. I think that had they not, maybe we wouldn't be having this interview. Yeah, I gotcha. You know, I, uh, I, I, I did a comedy class in the 1990s. I had a bringer show at Caroline's and I bombed. Uh, then in 2015, I was in San Francisco with my friend Mike, who's a comedian. He put me up and it hit. I think you're right. If you had bombed the first time, you... We wouldn't be talking right now, would we? No, I'd have to wait a few years to come back, let my ego regrow. <laughs> so it feels pretty good when everybody's laughing, right? And you're getting that nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Set up punch. Okay, no, your material is self-reflective and sometimes a little dark. You're talking about antidepressants and stuff. How real is this? How much of your set is... You know, you write from what you know. How much is truly you out there? Uh, pretty much everything that I have uh, in terms of everything I've told uh, is true. Very, uh, you know, very much just writing what I know mm -hmm. and, uh, and going out and performing that. The antidepressant bit, um, I think we, we both know pretty well by this point. Um, that's a that's a true story. Uh, I uh -huh. came into the doctor's office wearing a My Chemical Romance T-shirt, and the doctor prescribed me antidepressants. And I I was wondering, <laughs> did this help? You know. Yeah. So writing new material is essentially for you, waiting for more stuff to happen. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, Almost exclusively at this point. Uh, if I'm having like a boring week in life, I know that my uh, my material is going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is your method? Do you uh, get an idea or just a premise, write it down, and work on it, or how do you go about crafting? Uh, I do a lot of journaling, um, so I write a lot. Uh, 
I found that a lot of the stuff when I would talk to my girlfriend about, you know, what I journaled on over the week, she would find a lot of really funny stuff in there. And she's like, you got to take that on stage. Because uh-huh. prior to that, it was, you know, jokey jokes, little so, one-liners. Yeah, so you, she was the one, in some cases, who, like, brought this to your attention. You didn't even think to make it a joke, but she thought it was something you had to run with? Definitely, definitely. I think she's uh, uh, given me a lot of confidence, uh, maybe more than I deserve at this point. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, that's. I think that's made the material a lot more real. Uh, so, so Jordan, where are you going with this? I mean, how, where do you see yourself in five years? I mean, are you still going to be, is this a phase you're going through? Are you, do you want to be a comedian like full time? Like what's your vision of your future five, 10 years? Uh, I would love to still be performing. Uh, I would love to be touring. I think that's a big thing for me. Like I'll, I, I know I'll have made it as a comedian, uh, once I get to, you know, travel around the country, even if it's just down the East Coast, I'll be, uh-huh. you know, see the great lights of Baltimore and go, wow, I've <laughs> never been here before. Gotcha. Um, and comedy would have brought you there. That's hopefully where I see myself. Now, <laughs> Jordan is usually J-O-R, but not yeah. for cool guys, not for cool guys. Just like a George could be G-E-O or a Jeff could be J G E. You are G-E-O-R-D-A-N, Malice, right? That's correct. So how can people find you out there on the internet, on social media, on a YouTube channel? Where can we get in touch with you uh, and and see what you're doing? Freud Mayweather, uh, F-R-E-U-D, like the psychologist. Freud? Mayweather, like the fighter. Mayweather. My Instagram uh, handle. So... Okay, so Floyd Mayweather is Instagram. So it's really Instagram is the way to catch you. Yeah, Instagram, uh, you know, I'll have a YouTube account coming up soon. Me and my friend PJ are starting a podcast, and that that will all be marketed through Instagram. Okay, Jordan Mellis. Now, everyone at home is poised to watch this film at the same time we do here in the studio. So everyone at home has got to press play at the exact same time as we do in the studio. And that's what you're here for. Why don't you go ahead, Jordan Mellis, and give us that celebrity comedian countdown. Three, two, one, go. Thank you, celebrity comedian, for the celebrity comedian. Whoa! Oh, shit. Uh, Shit, they're closing? I just got here. They're closing early because there's there's a a launch to the moon. I got here at 5.15. Are you telling me you close at 5? Traffic was brutal. (laughs) Have you ever Florida Keys? All right, lock those doors. Walmart. Those are the NASA uh, (laughs) welcomers. The greeters. Welcome to NASA. Get away from me, old man. Now, this was JFK Space Center in, Center in Florida. I was there once, but it was in space shuttle days. So there was that giant building where they put the space shuttle. You were there in the 80s, not 75. I was there probably in the 2000s. I don't remember when. But now, so you had seen this involved. movie. You saw this movie in 75 as a kid or whenever you saw it as right. a child. I saw it on TV. As- and then when you were there physically in the 2000s, in the new century, you're like, this is just like that movie. <laughs> no, I, I didn't even remember. I really didn't <laughs> remember. It was space shuttle days. Now, look, the curator kind of guy lets this little punk, EJ, go yeah. sit in the capsule as if he was going to the moon. He said, come stow away. Come, come stow, stow away. Come away. Come in. Uh, Starring. Bridges. Yeah. Sorry. Daddy Bridges. The boy must be Jeremy Slate. Mm-hmm. Or is he introducing at the end? Now look at him slipping up. Look at this. Into the Kennedy Space of... Center launch area. I know. What kind of NASA Morgan did we Paul. Remember? Look, Morgan Paul. Who's from Morgan Paul? Surf 2. He was one of the dads in Surf 2. He was the guy who. Yeah, he was the guy who was in Blade Runner getting shot. Okay, so he is in the uh, alleged bigoted mustache. 
that. No, no. He's not no. the comedian. This is He's a serious. So, this is EJ's good friend who's his partner in crime, but really just getting him to uh the point in which he could infiltrate the in, in uh the um uh, facility. So his his friend's gonna call his mom. Can I get a ride home? I'm at the Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> they took a boat because it's Florida, right? And they're they're in and kids in Florida know how to drive boats. Well, yeah, he's got an outboard motor and there's crocodiles. Seriously. Carl, I always complain about how I feel like movies pander to the white boy in me. And this is a classic okay. example. You know, it's just like, but this movie seems like a little earnest because space is cool, right? It's when well, they're like yeah. BMX bandit. Like you're it's a boy who has a BMX bike. And I'm like, come on. I don't want to watch that crap. Now he he's know. breaking in for like to sneak onto he's breaking in for like real heady reasons you know what I mean he's not some vandal. Whoa! Oh, he's does he have a, he has a rocket. he is a vandal. He has a spray can in his uh, back in his box. Like he's gonna get to the moon and tag it. It's a stupid plot point. That's his lucky toolbox. That's why oh, he this... brought it. No, is we, there a plot? This movie's two minutes into the opening credits and he's already climbing into the fucking... Yeah, it's uh, a TV movie, so let's get to it. Now, look, yeah. one. I want you to turn up the sound when I tell you, because this guy goes, hey, are you all? Are you okay down there? So he puts on a fake I'm an adult voice. It's kind of fun. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Stow away. Yeah, might as well just Stow. leave it up for a little bit because it's going to come quick. Stow away, away to the moon. Stow away. Stow away. Stow away. Uh oh, here we go. Stow away. <laughs> now, look, don't get the impression like this is a gr good movie and it's charming. We just saw something funny, you know. This movie's very bad. I didn't realize I've all my life I have not been using my adult voice, Carl. Yeah, well, oh, I'm okay. Uh, don't oh, forget to donate to Mutiny Radio. <laughs> as an adult, uh, donate to Mutiny Radio at Venmo at Mutiny he goes, Radio. He goes, who's that over there? Uh, it kind of looks like Charlie. Oh, it's Take Your Daughter to Work Day. He's got his tool. Take your kids. <laughs> Take your daughter to work. <laughs> Why is there a young boy oh. wandering around the space station? Take your daughter to work day. He came along. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about space stuff. Yeah. We're talking shop. We're talking which, shop. Yeah. Look, I you got to get an eight millimeter sprocket for the. As, <laughs> as I was saying in the elevator before we got out, you got to get an eight inch sprocket. <laughs> you check the O rings, right? We wouldn't want them to crack. Yeah. I checked the O rings. This is my report. <laughs> This is the most boring <laughs> game of Super Mario I played. Now, as a kid, okay, so I was nine in 75. So I just thought okay. it was cool that a kid stowed away on a space rocket, you know, because it was fueling a fantasy of mine. Or if I didn't have that fantasy, I'd be like, yeah, that would be neat, you know? <laughs> It's funny you said 75 because the big space movie was 77, Star Wars. Yes, but that was totally fake. And this could really happen. This could no, really it happen. Would, no, it couldn't, says the internet, for like a million reasons. But this is based on a book. Yes, this was Star based Wars was not based on a book. <laughs> no, Star Wars was based on what's really happening out there in the galaxy. Um, it's just so far, far away. And it was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. You say, well, how do you know this future space stuff? Oh, it was a long, long time ago. Yeah, somebody wrote it down. Yeah. It would okay, pass the on novel, for generations. Th there's a novel. It's the same name, Stowaway to the Moon. It was by a guy named William Roy Shelton. Um, and so John Booth was hired. It's TV to to uh, make Assassinate the Assassinate Lincoln. Very far afield from the book. Look, I don't think it. Oh, he's ready to do it. Uh oh, here comes a camera. I didn't plan on this. <laughs> Retreat. Yeah, all right. I'll go next lunch. You know. Hey, wait, there's the, an emergency something locker. 
Bing. As I was saying before, I was <laughs> elevator. I checked the O-rings. It's in my report. <laughs> Give it. This is a English sprocket. We need a metric sprocket. Hold that thought. We're walking into another room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look! See the emergency closet. The what emergency. Oh, he's got a lot. Oh, shit! Now, okay. right. That's what it should be. It should be oh shit. And now I'm not going to be able to successfully execute my mission and get. I've got to. Uh, and then some neat, nifty way that shows he's a great kid. But no, no, that's not what they do. They just go. You know, he just he walked out. This movie doesn't do anything it's supposed to do. By the way, we, we'll see it as it goes along. It looks really pretty. That rocket ship and the time. Uh, what's it called? There's so much it? stock footage in this, Mike. So much stock footage. This is stock footage, huh? That is right there, but not <laughs> what we saw. A moment. Not this. Not this. No. Well, it's science fiction. You know, you you can kind of make it broad, well, and people will follow. Don't you wish it was both the dads from? Uh, oh, from is, that, is that the dad right there in there? No, no. I would be great if those guys showed up from Surf Two. Yeah, I'm trying to show you the dad, but they're not cutting to him. He's not no. this guy. He's not in the bubble. It's nope. not this guy. Not Fred Armisen. That, that was him. That was him. Although some guy oh, was yeah. making his face. That's stock footage. That's stock footage. That's stock footage. That, that is not stock footage. Because it doesn't say I stock watermarked on it. <laughs> okay. Now you see the scene we're in right here, this little room. That's yeah. gonna be like the half of the movie. It's gonna well, suck. It is a stow. So it's this room, and then how does he stow away? He goes into like the wheel of the plane and he hang goes out into there. the he hides in the garbage. Now the space we never garbage? see him do it. We never see him do it. Now, that's another thing that the film fucks up. Of course, if you're going to stow away to the moon, we need to see him get, you know, it's accomplished. The oh, thing you do. I did it. We're taking off. We never see him actually stow away. That's right. Do we see the moon? Yeah, we see stock footage of the moon a lot. They didn't shoot on location? They... <laughs> No. Dude, dude, dude. This is not good too. That's dad. Dad's going to work. Bur, 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 bur. But wait, it's there's a note. Day. There's a note. Hi, Dad. I'm running away yeah. enjoying the moon circus. You don't love me. He goes, holy shit. Now, you know what's a cute story? In real life, they're married. Oh, this couple? Yeah. I see. Yeah. Now the I like how they the husband's a real actor. He's a character actor on a million things, and I'll talk about him a little later. The wife's really only been in this and one other thing, but they were they never divorced. They had children. They lived their whole lives together until oh, cool. they passed. And it's just a nice story. He's still alive, I think. So she's just like, Let, I'm doing a TV movie, honey. Why don't you come join me? I guess something like that. I Love couldn't that find it on the internet. Weird. See, I looked up her first and I was like, oh, this is the only thing she ever did. Oh, wait a minute. She did this one other thing in 1969 and that's it. I, I was going to tell you like, uh, there's Lloyd Bridges, by the way, and we're starting. Which looks like airplane, right? He was also right. in a control. Yeah. Now he really reinvented himself. He was a serious actor, but when airplane and naked gun two, and there was another one. Hot shots. Hot shots. Yeah. He turned himself into this comedic actor. Did the Leslie Nielsen route. Mm hmm Because Leslie Nielsen was a serious actor. Yeah. That was, yep. I mean, airplane worked in 1980 because they were playing a straight ish. Straight. Yeah, they always say like when you see a movie with Leslie Nielsen and he's playing it funny, like, you know, he's it's not that great. <laughs> because he's in on it. It was funny in, in Naked Gun when he plays it straight. Ish. I guess I picked the wrong day to stop sniffing glue. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So he goes into the garbage what? and what the F? A stowaway. That's ridiculous. We brought garbage from the earth to the moon. No, it's a stowaway. 
<laughs> no, well, the thing is, they were like, you're 85 pounds overweight. No, we're not. And they were going back and forth. We need to do a scrub. We're 85 pounds overweight. Well, because it's raining outside. It's the water. No, we right. account for yeah. that. <laughs> it's about the average size of an eight-year-old boy. Roger. You, you got it, though. Now, look, you see the guy past him? Yeah. That's a character actor. You'll know his face, and you've seen him a million times before. He was like the boss on Cheers, and he was in, like, Rhoda or some crap. I got it all written down here, but you're going to see. He kind of has a, a Richard Mole look, a little bit broader, but. He never copy is. He Very died married. of Alzheimer's at 79 years old in a nursing home. He didn't have any kids. Stock footage. Well, it's better than the exterior shots in Florida. Like, all right, we want you to shoot off the side of the road. Got and that. With the wind. You Make sure you get wind. those awful clouds in the background. Gotcha. <laughs> the wind blowing. Yeah. Nature takes over these movie shoots. Camelot. College. Right. Now, Camelot obviously came from jfk so that's what king that arthur guinevere <laughs> lancelot now look you know his face hunter i With didn't cybers. research is it fred barnes <laughs> i don't know i just know his face now they're like my son is stowed away upon the ship you know, come on <laughs> sir <laughs> Has he it ever occurred to you it could be a practical joke? Wait a minute. So didn't the spaceship blast off already? Mm -mm. No. Oh, no. They, they haven't left yet. Yeah, and they didn't find him. He, they were about to open the door and find him as a stowaway. And then they said, "Up, oh, we figured out the 85 pounds thing. And they didn't. They rain. were wrong. It's the kid. It wasn't rain, but... It yeah. might have been, well, we're going to be go for launch anyway. Now, I did see this film. This is my fourth time watching it with you. But that doesn't mean I, Pay this attention. film is pretty bad, Mike. It's pretty bad. It's, it's There's no closed captioning either, so you have to kind of focus on it. To, and there's not much to focus, I guess. Woody Harrelson. Well, I can tell you all they're doing right now is saying, okay, we are a go for launch and all the excitement of getting ready Doc. for, yeah. Stock footage, Stock, TV real movie. footage. <laughs> God. Can you imagine acting in that thing? Terrifying. <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. wait. I was so say they have to wear space suits in outer space because you would die if you didn't wear a space suit and were hanging in the garbage. Yes, that's Mike, you're right. That's the internet made a big, big deal out of that. The cabin get it gets depressurized because of the going through. I don't understand why. I don't know why inside would matter, but it does. And they wear their suit and they don't do the pressure when they're taking off. That kid would be dead. Yeah, my inner white boy would be dead on a trip. Absolutely. Like this. Yeah. Look at the Whoa. shape. How did they do that? They spent it's two so million bad. dollars on that. Another thing oh. is the G-force that kid would have to endure. You see, if you're seated in a chair and that yeah. chair is ready for the form of your body, that's one thing. But if you're just sort of like sitting against like the wall or something, that force would push you down. You just mush into... Not like uncontrollable, but pretty much you can't fight it. Wherever you were when you started getting the G's, you're staying there. Now, when you say getting the G's, you must go through space camp to <laughs> practice getting the G's first before you get blasted off in outer space. Is that correct? Am I wrong? Only kids who went to space camp will end up in the end becoming astronauts because they learned That's, about G. They learned it from space camp. This would make a good double feature with the movie Space Camp, which I never saw. Bingo. Kids, don't stow away to the moon. If you want to go, join Space Camp. Another reason this movie is bad is they never give him shit. They never say, never so give him you shit. realize what you have done. They never wrong him. You can't just fucking, Wait. you're not invited. You're not invited, kid. 
Now, I wonder if this novel was written in 1936. <laughs> um, this novel was written in 1974. Wow. And this movie is 75. So this is, they have no excuse not to know science. No, you're right. This it was not written in a time before they knew. 1860s, right? Like Verd. Now look, Jules Verd. Here's one of the Stock. reasons. Here's one of the reasons the movie's bad. They will pretend they're in zero gravities, which mean which zero gravity, which means just sort of yeah, right. You'll see Float it. it around. It's awful. Oh, it's awful. Well, I um, like this guy's acting. First off, he, you know, as a comedian, you should always stick your hands in your pockets when you're talking <laughs> and look distantly in the crowd. But their special effects consists shaking the camera <laughs> and then cutting to this guy outside, adjusting his glasses. Like, that was it. That was the effect. Look nice at the shot. big, you... almost as big as the shuttle building behind him. Yeah, look at this. The shot is like the guy's perfectly in the middle and one side is a parking lot and the other side is this big building. <laughs> Okay, this guy's name is Edward Faulkner. What's interesting is he's born in a leap year, February 29. He was born on February 29. Huh. So he is, and he died when he was, what, 20 years old? No, he's still not dead. He's still not dead. Wow. Oh, you mean because of the, um, the leap year? Yeah, leap he's year. 80 years exactly. old in, in human years. Uh, he was not. an American film and television actor, Lexington, Kentucky, mostly known for his roles in John Wayne films. Including Hellfighters, Green Berets, Rio Lobo, Undefe the uh, Undefeated. The Undefeated is the movie that his wife was in. So they probably met there. That's probably what happened. He also played small roles in TV and film. Dragnet, Tim Conway Show. And uh, he, was a, he was in the Air Force for two years as a fighter pilot, believe it or not. Uh, they're doing definitely. their zero gravity stick. Yeah, they're going to do that throughout. And it's really silly. There uh, is uh, our dad. Whoa. Yeah. Now that's Morgan Paul. And like we said, he was in that Blade Runner film. Yeah. With, well, yeah. You know what a turtle is? Same thing. Tell me he, about well, your mother. He was also in a, another important movie, and I use capital letters for that. Surf but, uh, 2. Surf 2, right, yeah. What he was in Norma Ray, he was in the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. There's Norma the Ray's a Norma Ray's a movie I'm thinking of. Oh yeah, look at the weather outside Florida. Right. By the way, everyone in Florida watches the the launch from their TV their TV set in their living room. Honey, you know they're launching that rocket ship down the street. Oh, turn on the TV. <laughs> yeah. Get the family. <laughs> look at the no, wind. I, I hate Florida weather movies. <laughs> God, it's so distracting. Yes. Yeah, I, I so waited to show you that, and I didn't have to. You saw it on your own. I already said it. You wrote down notes. Mike, Michael freak out Mike, at the wind. I was like, Mike, look in the window. <laughs> but you caught it right away. Fuck you, wind. Every and, movie shot in Florida looks terrible sometimes. I mean, you, recently you they pulled it off. director and cinematographer. for not, Look how he puts on this hat in slow motion. Oh, my God. Too soon, man. Get Land on the moon first. I gotta take a selfie. No, no emails, no text message. Son wrote a letter, put it on the dashboard of his father's car. Yeah, <laughs> going to the moon. Wait, he's getting up in zero gravity. Easy. Do we even know the boy's name? His name is EJ. E oh, um, so he was the final credit in the opening. Because usually when they have kid actors being the lead, wait a minute. Yep, hold on. What's that? I'm Something looking at the garbage. the garbage. Yeah, there's a Snapple off. bottle. There's a Snapple bottle in the garbage that goes in recycling. <laughs> and this pizza box goes in compost. And we have a stowaway boy. He goes, I found the 85 pounds. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. This yeah, guy's we'll be name back is after these messages. He's playing astronaut Ben Pelham. And uh, he was in Austin Powers. He was in The Incredible Shrinking Woman, which I sent you a link that might be a good one, Mike. He was in Batman movie. and Robin as party guest. Wait a minute. Who is he in Austin Powers? Because I've only seen that movie 100 million times. In uh, 
Austin Powers International Man of Mystery, 1997. He was American UN representative, which probably means he was scene. sitting in one seat. I think he did some really good nod work uh, <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> One now, million dollars. Doo -doo. Now is the time in which they're supposed to be saying to the kid, hey, man, what the fuck, dude? But they never do. They never do. They let him slide. Let him slide. Lloyd Bridges. Oh, there's is Lloyd. Oh, remember the scene in Airplane? He goes, oh, my God, they've got no chance. There's no way. Remember when he left the microphone on? <laughs> so funny. Forget it. Forget it. They're dead. They're dead. <laughs> there's there's a son here. Which one? Jeff? Bo? No, no, not your kid. No, you see the astronaut's getting mad, but he's getting mad at the fact that they're gonna have to scrub, essentially. Um, why don't you turn on the sound for a little while and see how unrealistic they uh unrealistic they they're acting. Oh, how I hate to hit Charlie with this. Look, Rick. Carly's um, Lloyd Bridges down on the ground. Landing on the moon. Not one of them says anything about a stowaway. Well, some things just can't be anticipated, even in the rule book. We got to abort. What do we have an emergency? Three of us could look off our suit for not four. I want to be in the way. I can help you. I know I can. I've studied up. And I can... Dave, set me up in the private line. I can't stand this. Really? That's their argument? Yeah, yeah. I, I can help. I know I can. I know I can. Listen, I take to the private line. Yeah, that's not your friendly astronaut position. Eric, what's going on? Oh, Charlie, it's Dave. Dave, what's going on? Dave, what's I'm on private because I don't want to blast this into the press center for the whole world to hear. Yeah. Charlie? <laughs> We've got a stowaway. What? What? What'd you say? What'd you say? Huh? Great acting. This is so TV. Even this director, because he doesn't suck. Check it out, man. All the all the internet had to say about this director is this guy always came in on time. He was under budget. Yeah, <laughs> you could count on him. I Can we need a what shot and what he say shot and go? What? What do you say? That's right. That sounds good. Say what do you say one more time? Print. What do you print. say? What do you say? Print. Great print. Okay. Um, now listen, I gotta shoot a Christmas movie for lifetime. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's go and roll. <laughs> it's over. I went in there and I said Christmas, 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 Christmas. Christmas, Christmas. It's Christmas and Christmas. That's my Christmas movie, Carl. Christmas and Christmas. Christmas. It's Christmas time for the Christmases. <laughs> Christmas during Christmas. Right. Christmas with the Christmas. <laughs> Mike, let me be the first in 2023 to wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, Carl, thank you. Uh, and I want to wish you a happy holiday. I mean, Merry Christmas. Oh, oh. Shit. Thank God I made that fa pa now, early in the year. Fa pa. Fa pa. Okay, fa -pa. now this director was a British born American film TV director known for westerns and adventure films, often starring John Wayne or James Stewart. Inexhaustible director of series, televisions, and undemanding movies. Undemanding movies. He was reliable rather than stylish. <laughs> he was renowned for bringing work in on time and on budget. <laughs> he was assistant. Yeah, I mean, good for him. Yeah, I, mean, I guess. Yeah. He was a working, he punched a clock. He, Charlie, we need a film. No, his name is uh, Andrew McLaglin. Andrew McLaglin. V. He has a V initial in there. Andrew V. McLaglin. Right, right. Yeah. Um, morning, Andy. You don't get in his cup of coffee. <laughs> Actors <laughs> on set. <laughs> now, is this a flashback? Yeah. He's explaining why he's up there. So, basically, it's he's saying... I was a great industrious, studious kid with my friend, and we were even we everything space loved everything space. But our big problem was money. We couldn't make the capsule model. We couldn't. We needed money. So he, he talks about their struggles to get money, and his friend in the Everglades who helped because they would they would catch crabs and sell them. This movie sucks, Michael. 
I'm looking at the uh, tablecloth behind the boy. Look at that. The yeah, fucking wind yeah. blowing around. I'm totally like, right. well, look, the tree leaves are blowing behind the dad. Yeah. And then there's some palm trees behind them. Wait, there's better. There it is. Yeah. Not too much jiggle there. Did your dad dress like that in 1975? Yeah, like actually. Like that a... kind of short. Yes, yes. That kind of short sleeve and uh, wider ties, ways. really wide ties. Turn wide it on because his real life wife okay. is talking to him. Okay, hang on a sec. Sorry. Mr. Hudson, the science teacher tells me that he is just stubborn enough to do something very special with his life. He's stubborn, all right. They didn't ask us for a single dime for this project. They did it all by themselves. I realize that, Mary. My complaint is that his grades are going down. What a, what a good dad. Then what are his chances for watch. scholarship? He's going to like... You know I can't afford to can send Watch his college. love. You're going to see it right now. Then what would that stubborn, kooky, brilliantly gifted little boy do with his life? Yeah. Okay, that's as good as it gets in this film. That is this most most emotion we will see in this film. That's his big dad moment. Yeah. That no good lazy roust about we won't genius of a son. This boy's going to save one of the astronauts' lives. He's going to find the other astronauts when they get lost. There will he be no is taking his grades are going down as he builds a homemade rocket in our backyard, Carl. God damn it. Everglades. <laughs> and then it dawns on them. He's building a rocket ship in our backyard. Our son is a genius. Oh, yep. here. Okay, so this is their friend. Like, you can see his... Um, trailer home kind of he lives in the everglades. everglades now the thing is this is 1975 where the world was like like how do i explain this like today some jerk might be like talking about a pedophile thing right now you don't go see some creepy man in the woods you know what i mean right but right. in the 70s like i don't know the world sort of like that isn't the world there's a few of those creeps but not everybody is one today this strikes me as weird like you don't go hang out with some dude and with the, in his trailer have some listen the guy's not even offering full-on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches he's just like here's a uh, half of one little, yeah the peanut it's butter not, half. yeah it's just the peanut butter half and it isn't even the second <laughs> slice of bread i'll eat the jelly half don't worry about it now, EJ's okay. mom made that bread, and he was bringing it to Mr. Whatever. Oh, I was wondering what they were eating. Like, I do like the shots of the Everglades, and I do think it's a really nice touch. It grounds this movie that these kids are growing up in this area, and what do they do? They, they know how to ride a boat, and they go see their neighbors, and they hang out with the old guy. Yeah. Like, so that's this is kind of touching in a way, and I, I agree. Like, it would definitely be presented differently, but it's not too outrageous to have, like, not at the, all. Not at yeah. all. Now he's talking about Land's End, which you might know historically was like where um, in England, I forget exactly where it, it was, by, but it was the North Sea, I guess. And widows and, you know, like people would go out and uh, go up for six months. They'd be at sea. And this is where the family would go. They, they called it Land's End because the ocean begins. So he's saying that for... The rocket in a sort of romantic way, like this is Land's End, like Earth's End in a way. There's a Land's End in San Francisco. That's right by the ocean and San Fr uh, the Golden Gate Park. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's probably the exact same concept. Right, because it's there's land and then it ends at the ocean. <laughs> yep. All right, we'll let you be an astronaut. Right, but you got to walk around here in slow motion. Okay, now we get some mansplaining. Now, why couldn't they... <laughs> Mike. Now, why couldn't they say that um, it was Apollo? Why'd they have to say Camelot? Say Camelot Odyssey. Well, you know... The title of the book had a colon, and it was like, "Oh, I should go I away on the moon." This guy right here. Wait, I'm sorry, Mike. This guy was the third man on the moon. This guy was the third man to land on the moon and walk on the moon. 
Yeah. Is he real. playing himself? Is Pete playing himself? Mm, yes, but his real name is Charles Conrad, so I don't know why it says Pete. But his because real name it's is his nickname. Charles. People call him Pete. He goes by Pete instead of Charles. Why wouldn't he go by Chuck or Charlie? But Maybe he does. Uh, that's a good question. People, you know, it's probably his middle name, Peter. He prefers Pete. Maybe now, he was an maybe. actor. He even auditioned for Apollo 13, but he didn't get the part. That's lame. Yeah, it's super lame. Uh, born 1930 in Pennsylvania. Third man to walk on the moon, Apollo 12. Commander of Apollo 12. Mission to the moon, 1969. Um, one chapter in the book, The Right Stuff, was dedicated to him, but there was no mention of him in the movie at all. Uh, much to the director Ron Howard's surprise, Conrad auditioned for the part. Apollo 13 genuinely wanted to be in the film. Howard couldn't find a part in the film, but was overjoyed to meet him anyway. Screw you, Ron Howard. Conrad died in 99 <laughs> due to injuries sustained in a motorcycle accident. That sucks. Now, look, he was a real actor. Beverly Hills 90120, Gary Shandling Show. Something called For All Mankind. I'm sure that's a movie thing. No, I think, no, that's a, like, they land on the moon type of TV show. Yes. For All Mankind. But then it has, like, some, I don't know. I, I think it's a fake TV show, like, mm -hmm. storyline. He was in so, Gary Shandling's show. That's cool. Yeah. Did he play himself? I don't know the answer, but the thing is, the internet sells him as an actor as well as a astronaut. Really? And Carl and I are from Montclair, New Jersey. We mention this every breath we have. And also yeah. we mentioned that Montclair, New Jersey is the hometown of the second man on the moon, right. Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. Well, I don't I know need... if that's really true, but that's the buzz. <laughs> he created Buzz Cola from Surf, too. This all circles around. Look, look at his face. You see him? You see him in MASH. He was in Cheers. Take that. See yeah. that guy? Yeah. You yeah, see yeah, him in Rhoda. Rhoda. So what's going on here is Lloyd Bridges is like, this must be kept a secret. And then he goes, sorry, Boff. It turns on the TV. It's no secret. Our son's up there. Do you think, isn't it weird that the guy from Buzz Cola is an astronaut in this movie? Yeah, because he's not Buzz All. Yeah. Because uh, of Buzz Aldrin? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Uh, yes, hi. A Florida That's News. real life wife. Hi, uh, uh, I, I want to hold a news conference. I'll take the first question there in the back. Yeah, how do you feel like uh, being the worst parents in the world? Okay, this press conference is over. What a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> look at him fake floating. Oh, there he is. Well, look, Mike, as a director, wouldn't you, like, put them hanging on rings, you know, by their knees, and then you turn the camera upside down? And I, then, as a as a director, I would make sure the cast and crew are done by five, so they could get home with the family. We all punch <laughs> out. Keep it on time. Look, when we did Fish Burgers, and I did our trip to the moon, the way those wires were all hanging around and floating in the air is I was upside down the whole time. I was upside down. It's so easy to do. Well, I don't think they have time in this movie. When you're upside down, you can swing, you see? And so when it looks right side up, it's like you're floating around. It's As, as director of So in the Moon, Carl, I like your notes. But <laughs> I right now, I got to go. I got to shoot a murder, uh, a true life murder docudrama. All right, I'm I'll back. Right back. I'll be right back. It's for okay. Lifetime. I'm back. Oh, man. 20 minutes into this movie. He has a watch? Carl, yeah. what astronaut has a fucking watch? <laughs> there's, I, I, I don't know. That might be a real thing. Astronauts have watches, but there's lots of... For what? Of, For like, why? For who? For what time it is? What time is it? Is it 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time? 5 p.m. Eastern? It's ridiculous. This, Like, in the thing, he goes, you've got that press conference coming up. He goes, press conference? He goes, yeah, check your schedule. Oh, yeah, in 20 minutes. It's just not realistic. 20 minutes. All right, turn it up. Let's hear some bullshit for a while. Okay. Try for us to sit up here hollering, go, go, go. Just imagine what Charlie's going through down there on the ground. 
they they scrubbed the land on the moon because of him. Maybe fifteen thousand miles. Beautiful. Why the private link, Capcom? I figured you might want to keep your reactions private to uh, what you're about to hear. What are we about to Roger, hear? Roger, Houston. Item from the UPI lead paragraph. UPI. The congressional investigation into the presence what is of a it, Soviet. Uh, it's a press service. Yeah, but what was it? Stand for U- unified. Was press- that? What does it stand for? I forget. You Unified know. Press uh, International. International. Okay. But I think they, I think they got okay. absorbed into another group. Right. It was like the Wire, right? Yeah, you know, like Reuters. Right. Right. Schedule for the Altai Highlands. We have a chance to. Okay. Find now, the oldest this guy's is saying there's no need to scrub the descent and to the, to the moon. They could still walk on the moon. Now we came here to get the oldest rocks of the universe. The, they're the oldest. They're older than Earth. That's they, it's called the Genesis Rock, and it's older than Earth. So that's oh, you're talking about the Genesis Rock on the Moon. Yes, right. The Infinity Stone. It's called the Genesis Rock. <laughs> when you put this it on the, the switch, the cheese. I thought I was seeing a movie about a stowaway to the moon, but it's actually about the Genesis Rock on the yeah. Moon. Okay, let me just tell you about this guy, I guess. Um, look, he's looking at their watches again. What does he have a watch? Well, look, say, turn it up because he's like, oh, yeah, press conference. Oh, yeah, food's and, uh, coming. Give him a little usual bar, Bill. <laughs> okay, I'll tell Charlie. No, no, don't tell Charlie. Let him sleep. See how casual him? everything is? Okay, okay. Oh, that astronaut food. Every every white boy loves astronaut food. What they're going to do is they're going to get EJ on the camera for to say hello to everyone. And right, he's going to say, I don't think we should scrub the, the descent. We should still land on the moon. So that'll go like over Lloyd Bridge's head, who's made the call. He's made the decision, goddammit. So they're going to trick lloyd bridges by putting the kid in front of all the world to say we should land on the moon and then lloyd bridges is going to be like hey man screw you dude we ain't landing on the moon i said no and they go oh it's the president for you lloyd bridges what he goes, hello, i just uh, hello mr president oh i just saw a little boy on tv you keep that boy on the spaceship don't screw up. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. President. Do not scrub the descent. America's going to see two versions. The little boy, we're going to the moon. And then when they come back to Earth, where's the little boy? <laughs> Does he make it back alive, Carl? Yeah, it's TV. B- by the way, we have the worst ending in the world. All the things we should see in the ending, we don't see. They just cut away to like two weeks later. And he's looking up at the moon going, well... That was a really interesting adventure. I'll never forget. It sucks. This movie sucks. They I, don't do he goes, so good to be home. Yes, son. Great to have you here. It's great to be here with mom, dad, and my favorite tool. My, wait, where's my favorite toolbox? I left it on the moon. Damn I'm, you, moon. I'm coming back. I'm going to stow away and get it back. Okay, so stow now we have this inappropriate stupid i don't mean sexually i mean inappropriate like it doesn't make sense he's saying do you know what shirley temple's mother used to say before she would go on screen and then we don't hear the answer and then when it's like sparkle or shine turn it up turn it up let's hear it now ladies and gentlemen we could show you some tricks with weightlessness but since our time is limited they're still in the same positions they were in. Let me show you what you really want to see. We'd like to introduce you to our extra passenger. What? Ladies and gentlemen, Eli Jordan Mackinac Jr. Mackinac. Better known to all of us up here as EJ. EJ. Hi, girl. Yeah. See how weird that doesn't fit the situation. He's not Shirley Temple. You know stock, I mean? stock footage, stock footage. Yeah, you'll see that right now. The people watching the broadcast are all stock footage. They were watching the real moon landing. But why? Why do you need that? 
Oh, then of course it's stock footage of everyone watching TV at the appliance. Yeah. Get away from my appliance store. Make a path to the door. You Get want a TV, you buy a TV. Buy a TV. You want to watch hey. TV, you buy it. This ain't a video library. Now look, he's going to talk to his friend now. Oh, his parents are at his parents' house. You're right. Listen, son, why don't you go outside? We're going to be uh, playing a little swinger games, and we need you to get some Florida 70s air. They're not like that. They're not like that. <laughs> oh, no, it's just the, the 70s of Florida. You're like absolutely that. right. That didn't happen at all. No, these, the it is the 70s. But those are leftovers, 50s people. Not everyone was hippies. It's Woolworths. I'm hypnotized by this footage. The Ugly. Beatles are coming to Shea Stadium. JFK's been shot. Yeah, that was Lee Harvey Oswald we just saw. <laughs> oh, and if my parents are watching, suck it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the laundry. I left home. Talk about running away. But seriously, Mike, he is further away than any runaway ever, right? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, Guinness, give me a call. Yeah, he ran away to the moon. I ran away so Fucked far, up. there isn't even air. I, it's freezing cold. I'm holding a second press conference. First question in the back. Yeah, you know, your son is the ran of, he's the first runaway to run that far away. All right, this press conference is over. All right, is this is conference is over. <laughs> this was a mistake. Turn it up. Turn it up. Okay, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Just CBS like, won't sue us. Everybody will see how, how safe it is. How really safe it is. He's talking about it's as safe to go to the moon as it is to get on a plane or a boat. Money with the space program, and people will get to realize how, how easy it's going to be to go to all kinds of places like Europe and, what? and China, Africa, what? and then to Mars. What is I he talking about? about? We all feel up Mars. here that. Now, that here he goes. He's going to say it. Landing. That's not just my opinion. Everybody on board concurs. I know Mr. Englehart has a very difficult decision. Doc footage. Let's ask him. <coughs> Based that decision on my being here. Now look I how there's no snowy vertical hold, horizontal hold. It's just. I'll accept it. Well, I accepted it even before I left Earth. I, I mean, it was it was just more See? dangerous. It's like flat happen. screen TV Didn't right just now. Try along the spaceship. And do nothing but Carl, that's not a flat screen TV. I don't know what the fuck that we just saw. Dr. Klaus said it's not only chance to find Oh yeah, that's right. I did say that. I did say that. We could absolutely descend. As long as we have the chance. Where's the rabbit ears? But I see my time's up. Thank you very much. I see that my time is up. Did you see it? There was snow and yeah, right. Well, that's how, you know, the TV connection is up. And every boy in 1975 know to say, well, I think my time is up. Now, look. I'm getting the light. <laughs> now, Lloyd Bridges is mad. Turn it up. He's like, fuck you. Fuck you. I said no. <laughs> Let's put one on our record right now. Neither I nor anyone else here is going to be calm, a blackmail, oppressive. Changing a mission decision made in this room by me. Oh no, Red Phone. Wasn't it? Oh. Yes, Batman. <laughs> yeah, Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> um, it's the guy it's who the me further, sir. Now, what we don't see in this movie is Lloyd Bridges properly being humiliated and embarrassed in yes, front of the world. We won't see that. This movie doesn't do anything it's supposed to do. Yes, Mr. Resident. You because you didn't win the election properly, Mr. Resident. Mr. Resident. No, it's president. No, you didn't. You know, there's been a slight semantical change of attitude towards your passenger. Right. This is how we find out that Lloyd is embarrassed and Oh, he's coming back. He's he got a dressing down and he's dressing back up. It's all semantical, Carl. Is it what? it's semantical, don't you think? <laughs> it's like rain. rain Isn't it semantic? I'm trying to think of yes, yeah, some semantic 
some some uh never mind. semantical i'm a, i'm a, uh, semantics anti-semantic there's nice. a really funny movie called The Homeboy. My friend Dave Gebro directed it. And there was one point this guy goes, I was being ironical. <laughs> oh, I've heard that. No, but I've yeah. heard that said seriously. Oh, really? Well, no, it was in this movie as a comedy. <laughs> I always remember that. I, I've heard that line again. And I always Maybe I that. heard it from you. Maybe I heard it from you. Yeah. Isn't that ironical? I was being ironical. <laughs> girl. Love that line. The Homeboy. Okay, now turn it on because we should have a proper fight right now and we don't. Look at that fake. Look at that. He was on a string. Did you see it? I didn't see the string. Such a, I was watching the guys try to high five. We're in space. No sound effect needed. So now... Oh, yes. Yeah, he sees all the landmarks of the moon map, and they're impressed with him. I see uh, Marvin, Martian. I see... Uh, oh, that well, reminds me of Romper Room. With oh, what was that in Romper Room? In Romper Room, she would take the magnifying glass and look out into the <laughs> TV audience. She'd go, I see Stevie and Michael and Johnny. You never saw on the mood. Waiting for her to say your name. She'd never say my name. I read a lot of Marvel comics. We all know that the moon is where the Watcher hangs out and the mm -hmm. humans have a city. Whoa! Uh, I'm they could have so, so easily done this. <laughs> We're going to tap that backside of the moon. He doesn't get a seat the whole time. He must be so tired from standing. I know. Now this kid must have a blast. He's on the so you're looking for strings, right? <laughs> I, 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 okay. I've seen this film a bunch of times, and I was looking for strings. Now look on his right arm. You can see it tug up. Yeah, that's what so I noticed you before. Can't see the string. You can see the tug up marks. We have twenty six movie minutes before this movie ends. Oh, I wish. This movie was not good in the end. This is, uh, uh, this is the president. Well, who is it? 75? It was uh, Agnew, right? I don't have an Agnew impression. No, there was. he was never president. It was Richard 70, Nixon. But N Nixon had to resign. And oh, well, and that was Gerald Ford. Gerald oh, Ford. Right, so Ford was president. That's right. right. God, Agnew I don't know my American got history. disgraced from some sort of scandal, and he had to resign off. He had to resign again, again. Yeah, that's right. But that was towards his end, right? I mean, it was. And they picked Gerald Ford. He was like from the Senate. He got made famous from being part of the Warren Commission. Let's see if I do. A... I don't know if I could do a Ford. It's been a while. It's been a while since I actually heard the well, president speak. Well, Ford was. Um, there for like a short time, like a year and a half, something weird. And he didn't run for re-election against Carter. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did Ford, yeah, Ford went against Carter, right? Right. And Carter trounced him. And then Carter went against Reagan and lost. Yeah. So lost, so Ford, right. They associated Ford with water Watergate and Scandal and Vietnam and the, uh, with Richard Nixon, they associated him with. Yeah. And oh, and don't forget the time he led a 85-pound uh, uh, eight-year-old boy a stowaway on the moon. <laughs> that was right an embarrassment. Now, right now, he's on a sort of, um, uh, on wheels. He's not really getting, you see, there's no bumps on his shoulders. He has like a dandruff problem. What's with the vacuum cleaner? The vacuum That's cleaner, cool. all the TV is doing is setting us up for the way he will save the astronaut's life later. The astronaut will puke in his helmet and they'll be like, vacuum it up. You'll see. I know how to do it. I did that 10 minutes ago. Oh, he's hanging out in the, under the seat. Under well, the it's like time to get some sleep. You see how he's strapped in? How could he be strapped in? Don't bonk your head, dude. Now. Look, look what's happening here. <clears throat> the astronaut Ben Pelham is throwing up. The truth is he's going to be sick. Okay. So wow. The two astronauts descend in the lunar landing. 
the lunar module to land, he'll be sick and he cannot like do his job, but he didn't want to say anything because he didn't want to scrub the descent. They fought so hard for it. And so the boy will have to like be the brains of. This is really irresponsible astronauting. Really? I mean, like strike one for letting a boy stow away on your shuttle. Strike yeah, why two were you for being... drinking the night before a launch, you idiot? Right, you idiot. I got 1975 COVID. I got COVID-75. What was I thinking? <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Blech. Ralph. Yeah. Ralph, is your friend Ralph down there? Are you calling <laughs> to your friend Ralph? Ralph. Ralph. Look. Wow. There's Outer no space is a Ralph. Technicolor rainbow. Speaking of Technicolor rainbow, blarv. Now, the whole concept of this was hide it from the other two astronauts who are right the fuck there, right over. They so can't tell looking. he has... Did you get bit by a werewolf? Yeah, no problem. I'm okay. I'm cool. I'm cool. The zombie just grazed my skin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> like, but how would they not the- hear him? Do they think he's calling to Ralph? I mean, how would they not know? Are you okay, Ben? How come they wouldn't? I wish he turns into a werewolf. Like, they go to the moon and, like, his sickness turns into a... I'm a werewolf. I, I hit that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you know Stock who's a werewolf age. astronaut, Carl? No. J. Jonah Jameson's son in the comic books. Went oh, to the moon. how interesting. Yeah, he was an astronaut and he brought back a rock, much unlike the Genesis stone. And that oh. rock turned him into a werewolf. What? Werewolf. Oh, my stomach. Oh, it really uh, gets. It's all stomachy I, down there. Oh. Do you think it's because you wore a baseball cap in outer space? This is why you're so irresponsible. Yeah. Well, is it the Cardinals he's wearing? <laughs> the Cardinals, they sucked back then. It was, it's not the Cubs, is it? It's, you see the C? Uh, the C? Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals? I'm not a sports guy, I just know movies. Oh, hi. Oh, third guy on the Act. moon, remember me? Act. Now, why would it be Charles Pete? You think it might be his middle name? Listen, what's up with the name Buzz? <laughs> astronauts were just astronauts. We don't question that shit, <laughs> right? Who, who's it was Buzz Aldrin the and name? What was the first astronaut? Neil Armstrong. That's Armstrong. A, yeah, uh, Armstrong. Nothing really there that. To... Oh, okay. I guess Armstrong's a weird. Well, that's fine. But Buzz and Charles Pete. Make up your mind, Charles Pete. <laughs> People have it, you know. I say he Mike. goes with Charlie. Okay, now he's pre- – turn it up again. Let's hear him pretend he's – Okay, set. but I think he should go by Chaz. <laughs> that would be so much cooler. What the devil's wrong with ground communication? You're a go for power descent initiation. Go for PDI. So they're in the lunar lander now. I said you're go for PDI. Go for PDI, Roger. Thanks, Cameron. Thanks, EJ. Yeah, no problem. This is like breaks every rule of the astronaut's handbook. Yep, every yeah. single one. It is Ooh. ridiculous. It's like a bucket list of things not to do in outer space. Check that off. <sighs> Have a little boy do the telecommunications. They go to fucking space camp and yeah. space academy. And ben, what's years. wrong? Are you are you sick, Ben? I know. Hi, I'm acting. I'm acting. <laughs> Uh, just Are pass me that quesadilla. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, good thing I brought this Taco Bell from Earth. <laughs> Help me stabilize. You've been eating uh, to Earth Taco Bell all this time? <laughs> Two Mexican melts. That's all. Okay, so what's going to happen is absolutely ridiculous they're going to land in the wrong place and they're like we don't know where we are what you know they're on the wrong side of the moon i said the back side not the wrong side <laughs> you know matter it's all dark matter of fact it's a whoa trippy there's no dark side, the dark of, the moon, side of the moon really yeah at the end at the end of side two if you blast it up you can hear it as the record could so dark it's all dark. Whoa. And then you listen to it on the CD and it's like crisp and clear. It's right there. 
but always on the vinyl, you could barely hear it, right? Because it was yeah. just going out of the record. Right, you would hear crackles louder than yeah than the actual final thing, and then on the CD, it's like plain as day. There's no dark side of the moon. It's all dark. Ah, there's so much for subtlety. Yeah, right. It, yeah, it's not good. I mean, I I never heard it. You're reporting it, but that's if, if that's reporting. the case. Can we take a moment and talk about the the album Dark Side of the Moon, which is the biggest selling record of all time? I think, like it's, probably it's, right. It was on yeah. the charts forever. It was famous for being on the charts for decades. Yeah, which doesn't make yeah, sense. Billboard. Really. It was like the police academy of its time. You turn on a cable station, there's police academy. <laughs> you go to Billboard Top 100, there's Dark Side of the Moon. E. Conrad again. <clears throat> okay, turn it up and how see how unrealistic it is that they're lost. Let me check my paper file. Yeah, it's totally on the blink. You know, in real Nashville, there's like a guy all the time monitor. I don't know. This is just so fake on TV. It's really if bad. If this was a Michael Bay movie, we would have hundreds of people in a control room as the camera swoops around them cheering. Yeah. And, oh, no, he's sick. Even like Apollo 13 or 11 or whatever. Yes, was. yes. Yeah. Apollo 13, it, it, right, that film with um, well, Ron Howard. The, with Charles Pete. Oh, no, it that. wasn't, but he was delighted to meet him. I'm so happy yeah. to meet you. Sorry it didn't was, work out. It's a real thrill for me to show you the parking lot of the studio. All right, there's your car. Okay. It, uh, I was an extremely, I was, the director was thrilled to show him the exit. I will always remember that this was a great, you know, the one time we ever met that was, I will finally remember for the rest of my life, our meeting this, this one time. This movie is about actors being astronauts. There's no role for you. <laughs> oh, we got a logo. Is that Charles uh, Johnson's logo? What's up with that? Jackson? No, FX. Oh, F FX movies. Oh, you're talking about the real logo. Yeah, there was a logo on uh, like yeah, a FX bug, movies, say. right? Right. So this is like uh, copyright broken eight ways to Sunday. <laughs> but I used to I think I watched FX movie M. I uh -huh. watched a bunch of I mean, I had a that's the glory days of cable where you have these weird channels showing <clears throat> on a, on a FX movies, movies like right. And it was the glory day of, of uh, which wasn't long ago, right? Five no, years. Wasn't that long ago? I mean, they still have, you have streaming uh, live channels that have like endless movies. Well, I can go to my cable right now, go to On Demand. It would be FX movies. And there's a million blockbusters there to watch. I never do it. I stream. Carl, do you have Game Show Network? Yes, I guess. Can you Can you record my episode where I talk about being the host of a bad movie podcast? What? Yes. What are you talking okay. about? I'm a contestant on a game show, which I won't mention until it airs, but it's going to air. It's it's People Puzzler on Game Show Network, and I'm introduced okay. as a host of a bad movie podcast. Okay, let me write this down. Game Show Network. I'll find out if I have it. That's the first thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and what's this, yours called? People pu uh, Puzzler. Like, you know, People Magazine has a crossword puzzle. It's based on oh, that. Okay. People. People Puzzler. puzzler. That is so stupid. Okay. Do you know the did? Yeah, I do. I'll probably. When it airs or it's like, Well, I don't know if we're, this episode will air before or after, but I'll, I can find a date for you. Okay. That'll be fun. I cannot yeah. wait to record you. Well, they, I have to, I, uh, I'm brought up as a uh, as a bad movie podcast guy, so terrific. If Do we can get some audio, we can... no, no. But if we can get the audio, we can include it, incorporate it in the podcast. Mm, can... Okay, we will uh, well, do it. Look. Sorry, I'm uh, upstaging Lloyd right now with well, my. Well, it's really period. terrible. He's like, okay, now listen. If he throws up, you got to vacuum it. Okay, I'm sure that'll never happen. But I do remember that we did a movie fart with the vacuum earlier. Yeah. He's puking. Okay. Uh, do you know what? What? Uh, no, I'll use the vacuum. Oh yes, yes, yes. Use the vacuum. 
It's terrible. Oh, there he goes, Mike. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm missing this. It's 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 uh yellowy green. Uh, uh what should I do? Spewy. I'll get the vacuum. It's the only thing I learned. Look at these Look, walking he's on space. wheels. He's on wheels. He's moonwalking. <laughs> Years before the Motown 25th anniversary special, there was moonwalking on television. Oh no, he's not really on the moon. He's right, right. He's uh, uh, a lunar lander walk. He's a space capsule. Ew, man, this is terrible to look at. Gross. I'm sure this it's clean. Really suit. Oh, now he's a. Why does right, he need it's a all helmet? clean, Mike. Look how clean it is. I don't understand. Like he needs to put a helmet on because they're in outer space. But the boy's right. okay. But he needs to put a helmet on. Well, no, it was because he was fainting and passing out, and they wanted him to have pure oxygen. That Well, that's what it was. I'm nodding in disagreement. I don't get it. <laughs> nah, thanks for cleaning up the puke. You're the best puker, cleaner-upper. <laughs> I could... Oh, you missed the spot, kid. <laughs> but that's the thing. He didn't. Like, it was obviously the next day. Roll him. Okay, so he's vacuumed up the puke. Right. Oh, you're saying like by the time they they shot it again, it was like a couple of days later, something like that, because he's completely fresh with no marks of puke at all. How could it be? Did he have wet wipes with him, ha handy naps, whatever they're called? My episode is going to air Wednesday, March 29th at six thirty p.m. Eastern Wednesday, Standard Time. Three twenty. People puzzler. Um, Wednesday, March 29 at, uh, 6 30 PM. I'll be right back, Carl. Let me check something. P M E S T. All right. That'll be fun. I'll look into that. So let me tell you a little bit about our star EJ. Okay. Right now, um, they're, the, they're lost on the ground and EJ is going to visually find them, by the way. It's a little unrealistic, but there it is. Okay, Michael Link is playing EJ Mackernut Jr. He's born in 1962 in Utah, big deal. So, you might have never heard of him, and you probably didn't, but he was on a show called Julia in 1968. He was on for 85 episodes from 68 through 71. He played er Earl... Wagger Dawn, Dorn. And then that was it. He would go on to like, he would be in The Courtship of Eddie's Father for one episode, The Sandy Duncan Show for one episode. He would be on this. He would be on three episodes of ABC After School Specials. Uh, he would be on Police Story. His most recent credit, 1994, our okay. boy here was on Martin for an episode in which he played Salesman. That's cool. Julia. I, I know. I remember that show. I don't think you I've ever do? seen it. From 68 through 71, Julia was on the air. He played Earl Waggerdorn for 85 a... episodes. That made him not famous. But, I mean, it made him He's, super not famous. Well, he was more famous for cleaning the puke out of an astronaut. Look at this, like, what? sexually suggestive tug Oh, job. yeah, joysticks. Yeah. Now he's – what he did is he had to adjust their orbit because they keep on flying over the spot where they're supposed to have landed, and they didn't. So now he's letting the astronaut sleep while he communicates with Houston it's back and worse. forth. The reason why you never heard of Camelot Odyssey is that NASA's embarrassed that they had a 10-year-old boy fucking clean up yeah. their problems. Hey, it's you know what? I just realized I keep saying Houston as a joke, but they're in Florida. At right. The, they're which is not realistic to the real – is this book bullshit? No. Hey, no, no. third man on the moon. This is not the first movie we saw that takes place around the uh, NASA's Florida space station. Do you remember that male stripping movie, A Night in Heaven, or what? Uh, with it was directed from the director of Rocky. We watched it. Um, uh, shit, what was the name? It was Christopher Atkins, A Night in Heaven. Like he was a male stripper. He he as dad was trying to get work, 
uh, these video game companies in 83, but the kid, you know, it wasn't as smart. Anyway, that took place around. I this never, period. I don't think. Yeah. It, was I, I uh, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, how did this get made, actually? Did, uh, did the movie uh, like a year later after us? How in the world can I should remember every single movie we've ever done? It was in it Florida. Sometimes. There was a stripper. There was a guy trying. His father was trying to get video. He games. was a high school kid. He kept falling asleep in class because he was stripping at night. And his dad was unemployed. And they 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 lived near right here where this boy blew off in outer space or uh -huh. whatever. They they lived by the launch pad. Okay, I'll have to take a look in our L W A F L M O Y. Archive, go to yeah. minirio.fm on your web browser you and then just click see dates. You just see dates. You don't see... I got to look in my own one. <laughs> it's actually listed on my website that I haven't updated since 19, 2019. Let's watch a full length movie on youtube.blogspot.com. If you go there, oh, yes, that's stops... the pre pandemic website. <laughs> well, during the pandemic, I was like, I'm going to catch up, and I stopped on like April. Uh, Oh, 2019, okay. April 29th, but it's listed there. I'll find it. Dancing in heaven. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. Sound like Woody Woodpecker. Let's listen for a little while. To this oh, bullshit. I don't want to, girl. I'm... I know, it's so bad. He has got binoculars looking out the damn window. This movie it just doesn't make sense. The movie is called a night, in, a night in Heaven, 1983. Uh, Chris Rackens, John Avinson. A Night in Heaven, 196. What'd you say? A Night in Heaven, 1983. Okay, I'll look. Yep. Captain Barnes, this is EJ. Directly south of you. So now he's no. identified. South. Okay. Since they landed in the wrong space, they're not going to get the Genesis rock, right? You're right. He's using binoculars over his glasses and a, a spaceship telling him to go south. Yeah, through the thickest window ever, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so what what EJ will do will he will guide them to where they can get one of these Genesis rocks because it's on the edge of the site that they were supposed to land in and so the rock range fellas go left no is... no 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 you're left you're left <laughs> exactly Mike that's what's gonna happen and they're gonna be like yeah we got the Genesis rock. First, you saved the astronaut in the capsule. Yeah. Then you found us because if you couldn't find us, we couldn't go back home. And this then you done... got us the Genesis Rock. First, you expose the uh, security uh, leaks in the <laughs> at the station. Second, you prove that a, a boy can survive outer space. Listen to this ridiculous speech he gives. I don't want to hear it. Come on, listen. <laughs> beautiful looks like maybe sometime way back in the beginning there was trees down there what grass and water and no there was never <laughs> trees and grass and water on the moon pal the land of milk and honey? yeah my mom used to read it to me land of dirt and sand pal if the moon could have ever been like that wait a minute kid we thought you were a genius you're a fucking crackpot you're, you're an we idiot. should have scrubbed this mission you're an idiot well, maybe a cactus could survive. Shut up, kid. You waited to tell me this once we got to the moon? If you said this on last time, we would have came back. Yeah, that's right. Turn this ship around, young man. Yeah. I can't believe you mopped up my own vomit. It's not like a cemetery anymore. Big peak right over the, in the middle of a, a big... There was, there was a, um, oh, a so sequel big. in which he was with Jimi Hendrix. Uh huh. Yeah, but the the cord he yanked the cord out of the wall, and Jimi Hendrix died. He he choked on his own vomit. But it was a great sequel. You think like he uh, they call him in? Yeah, he saved that astronaut's life when he was vomiting. Oh no, that's right. It was beforehand. Yeah, it was beforehand. It was beforehand. 
So their control room monitor shows television transmissions and the moon and it does. I I guess. Well, okay. In real yes. life, it was um, a three minute delay, something like that. Three three something delay, and you could see the the um, footage of what they were doing on the surface. The whole world could. Yeah, that's right. I love how they're using stock footage of the astronauts on the moon. Uh, we're approaching a rock, and now we're kind of walking around the rock. Okay, now maybe yeah, that, it's that, maybe that. it's Pete Conrad footage, and he's like, oh, "Well, if you want that footage, I want a part in the film." <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to be on the capsule. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna mansplain some procedure of. No, no, no. Mansplain some procedure. He was mansplaining. He was also his. He was sitting with his like legs apart, spread apart. He was manspreading. <laughs> Too. How dare you man spread while you man spleen? Look, I'm pretending that I'm getting over being sick. I know. They Whoa. should they should screw the mission because of him. I can't believe I'm worse than a stowaway boy. <sighs> Are you still acting, Ben? Yes. Ben. It's almost over. Give me some hot sauce. I want to see if my taste came back. <laughs> I completely huh? lost you... my sense of taste when I had COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Well, I was I like ridiculous. Listening... I started listening to a lot of John Denver. <laughs> Man, you had no taste at all. So now the lunar module is going to re, you know, it's going to like fuck the, the uh, capsule. And they'll be stuck on. No, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with this tug job stuff. And why is he so oh, sick? He can't move the joystick. That's how sick he is. I can't. The little boy has to help him. The joystick. Look how they tilt the camera. I know. This acting, like God bless Michael Link. I mean, it's a lot of, a lot of carrying. That's not real, by the way. Oh no. No way, no way. There's no camera that could have taken this is real, but what they were doing before with the lunar module in front of the capsule, there is no third party that could take that picture. You're either on the capsule or on the lunar module. You can't take a picture of both of them. This is real. Watch out, watch out, right. you idiot! Watch out, watch out, you idiot. ABC is going to kill me if you hit the camera. We're space fucked. Lock do, the do, space do, fuck do. mechanism. I'm singing the theme to the ABC night of the movies. CBS <laughs> Tuesday night original movies will return. Has been canceled. So maybe we didn't just say it. I, I don't think we said it. Lloyd Bridges is the father of Bo Bridges and Jeff Bridges. I don't think we ever even said it. No, I made a joke saying there's a kid on on a kid so away on the play on the ship. Is it Which Jeff? One, Is it Jeff? God damn it. No, nope. now turn on the sound because he's gonna fuck up. EJ's gonna do the wrong thing. EJ turned the wrong valve, the little fuck. Ben has enough oxygen in his suit system, but the question is, does EJ have enough? Oh, no. <laughs> Dirty acting. food. EJ, are you acting? I am acting. Well, fuck you. I'm okay. getting oxygen. Can you, man, I would hate to fucking be an actor and put on that helmet. S smell. It seems uncomfortable. Oh, it smells like air. Oh, smell sweet this air. Sewage, dude. Smell this. This is from our galley sewage. Sewage. Yeah. Now that you give the boy air, what about a spacesuit? Uh, I think the kid's fucked. We don't have one for him. We don't have one. I have one. You don't have one. Oh, no. Put a little space blanket on you. Could I borrow yours? Okay. So, idiot EJ turned the wrong valve, and that fucked the air all up. Okay? Now they, now they don't have enough air anymore. Okay? So they're putting on their suits so they can breathe. But what's poor EJ going to do? Well, what he's going to do is he's going to go into the lunar lander and he's going to hang out in there 
and it can have air in there. Okay. But, and pressure, you know, but he's not going to have warmth and you know how cold it is in space, right? It's a little nippy. So he is going to nippy his ass off. All oh, no. the way home. I'm pretending. Either... I'm Last acting. Bite. Oh, he grabbed his crotch. He really did. I'm not kidding. I didn't see it. I didn't see that ever before either. Interesting. Space group. Look how there is gravity in there. Look how he's on the floor. Goodness. Uh, I'm good. I'm just going to clutch my chest. So is he going to get frostbit? No. No. No, everything. what's going to happen is no, th th this movie fucks everything up. There's going to be moments of tension in which he's like, I'm so cold. And they're like, don't fall asleep, EJ. Don't fall asleep. He's like, I'm falling asleep. EJ, don't EJ, fall asleep. What? Don't fall asleep. Gotcha. Fall asleep. Carl, did you ever show you why I miss I'm missing a toe? Because I was in outer space. And I got frostbite. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that is cool. It's like, how'd you break your arm in a skiing accident? Not yeah. like, oh, that's cool. On my steps. How'd you get your, why are you missing a toe? Because I went to the moon. But he didn't go to the moon. <laughs> yeah, he I flew was 10 around years the old. Moon. The year okay. 1975. By age eight. Lloyd Bridges pissed. Lloyd Bridges. This is a clown show. My Bridges Lloyd. <laughs> my Bridges Lloyd. <laughs> oh my God! Good for Lloyd Bridges going in and my getting a job. Florida. Lloyd I, Bridges was on. He was a TV star too, right? He had his own TV show. Yeah, uh, was it Sea Quest or something? Right, Sea Hunt. Sea Hunt. Yes, fifty-eight to sixty-one, which isn't a long run. But it was a hit show. See, I think his son, I think Spio was in there too. Oh, Sea Hunt. He played Mike Hunt. You're right, the Sea Hunt, right? Yeah. Spell Hunt with a C first. Okay. Well, it was Charles Mike Hunt. Sea <laughs> <C> Hunt. <laughs> now, Mike, what is a four-letter word? Always refers to a woman, ends in UNT, and it's not the bad one. Ant. Right. Right. I know, I read that joke in National Lampoon. To see Mother Teresa was doing a crossword puzzle. <laughs> she asked the Pope. The Pope says, Ant. She goes, Do you have an eraser? <laughs> it's funny. That is so funny. All right. And he's like, I want answers. It's always personal. It's it's he's Lloyd want turn it on. Oh, I want to know this, want and I want to know that. Not NASA. No, sir. As soon as possible. You got any questions? Okay, get to work. I need some answers. All right, you can exhale now, Lloyd. You said you your lines. In, you remember in Apollo 13, there was that scene, I need a tube made out of, and he goes, this stuff. Remember, and it was all dramatic. They, they started never saw the movie. Stuff together. You never saw it? No, and I never will. Right. It just passed me by. All right, stop what you're doing. Uh, See you, I'll, Apollo. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll carry on this. <laughs> Sorry, okay, audience. I'll go. He's got all a stream. Right. Do I need to see the prequel and the sequel, 12 and 14, or is it just go? <laughs> I'm not going to sit through Apollo 1 through 12 just to see. Just Apollo. to get to the understand 13. I haven't seen that. I never saw the right stuff. My good friend seen? Andrew Rich is a comedian. He's got a great joke about that. Like, like he walks in on his wife's shows, and it's like uh, RuPaul's Drag Race or – house hunters he knows what's going on immediately she walks on in his show and goes why are they stealing that methylamide from a train because when i'm I, this is season five of breaking bad how am i going to explain <laughs> well, you see. it's really funny i'm getting cold, uh, cold. <laughs> it's exactly right mike he's going to be horrible acting and he's going to be cuck cold and they're going to say Hang in there, kid. It's only four days left. 
Well, according to my watch, we have 20 more minutes before uh, we go due south here in space. Oh, we got a yellow light. It's too carbon, too much carbon dioxide. What do I do? You got to pull this lever. Okay, I'm getting, I'm reaching, I'm getting, you got to pull it now. I'm getting, I'm getting, I, got, uh, I, I got it. He goes, okay, we're getting a green light. He's okay. It's terrible. I guess because, I don't know if this is because it, it aired on a cable station as an intact whole movie, but it doesn't seem like there's moments in this film where it stops for a commercial break. We saw well, Mazes of Monsters. Right about that. It's CBS. It was not. It was 1975 on regular television. You're right about that, Mike. Yeah, because usually, like when we saw Mazes of Monsters, they, sure. they would have these crescendos and then they would resume. You know, we saw that best... one with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was and, about to uh, say. Yeah, the uh, James Manfield story with Lonnie Anderson that had Lonnie the commercials Anderson, in that's it. The name yeah. I was looking for. And it was during the elections, no less, against Carter and Reagan. Yeah, we saw a lot of 80s commercials, and I think we did see, didn't we also see the um, uh, we saw it I was like saw the Democrats are raising yeah, tax yeah, yeah. prices, gas is going out the roof. Ronald Reagan is your solution. It smells funny in here. Okay, now listen. EJ cannot come from the atmosphere. A little dipper. There's no heat shield. They call the they call the lunar lander little dipper. Until just before re entry begins. At the last possible moment. Repeat. The last the last moment. Possible moment to move to Camelot. And there should be enough reserve and a little dipper to overpressurize it just before you break the seal in the tunnel. And that overpressure is. I can't, man. He's reading from a cue card. Is he reading from a cue card? Or, or he memorized all this? I think he probably memorized it. His eyes do not look like they're. Reading from a cue card on the bottom of the floor? Right. Yeah, right. He's not doing the shifty eye. Ah, and as Saturday Night Live is back, and they're all like, "Hi, it's great to be here at this diner." I was wondering, <laughs> when they're like knee I, deep in a sketch. Yes, I always hated um, how Marlon Brando had to have cue cards. Do your fucking job. You're the most famous person in the world for acting. Do your fucking yeah, job. Yeah, right. Yeah. People are, I mean, I learned about you in acting in movie class. Right. They did. They job. taught us to memorize. <laughs> and roll them. I, I, I goes, oh, it's going. I just can't see it. I see my own breath. Oh, that's not the cold. Your breath stinks, kid. <laughs> yeah. That's it. He's now, never going to survive. The guy who got... Kept... Never mind. Sorry. No, no tell me, tell me. Good. I was no, going to say they're going to they're gonna land back in Florida with a corpse of a boy. Well, a that skeleton. would... If this was a good movie, we would see that. If this was a good movie, he would die, and then they would be like, he saved us from this. He found us when we were lost on the moon. That He broke all the rules because he had a dream. No, we won't see that. No, he's going to say kid, stuff like, when you land, we're going to throw you a big party, EJ. All of you and your friend will come. That come, that le that, that little motherfucker who got you on their ship. He's going to help you. He's going to He's going to. We never see the party. We never see anything. They just cut to the swamp and he's with Mr. Crab Finder. Yeah, we, you'll see. You'll see. We made so it. In my version, the kid dies. They bury him in the moon, right? Oh, it was an accident. It was like one of those wacky comedies. We better bury him on the moon. And then they come back and they gaslight. What What boy? What kid? What stowaway? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? You have a recording of that? Oh, yeah. that? We were fucking around. Oh, <laughs> no. I vomited in my puke. Oh, no, no, boy. I vacuumed. No, I vomited. I vacuumed the puke. At the Astronaut Academy, we used to play this prank. I thought you guys were in on it. Yeah. Ghost Boy, we called it. 
Now, right now, Lloyd Bridges is scolding them for talking because it's taking oxygen. Come on, let's listen. Come on. I hate this movie. It is terrible. This is our end, by the way. He'll be in this room till the end, and then they'll just poof. Well, no, that's not true. He'll return into the captain. Okay, to keep him awake so that he doesn't fall asleep, he is going to describe what he sees outside the window. Let's listen to it. Let's play I Spy. I spy with my little eye. This is an order. Kid, the letter S. What? Star? Uh, star! Oh, gotcha. Listen. Like a big blue marble. Yeah. Well, he's saying like some aliens come and God gave them this planet to, to populate. You'll hear it. Oh, and I see space angels. No, kid. And a space light. I'm, and I'm approaching the space, space light. light. No, don't, don't approach, approach the space, space light. light. There's Florida. You see under the clouds? It is. That's so beautiful. It's so ridiculous, though. They're in a ship going to Florida, so they're seeing Florida. It's stupid. It's like they're falling straight down. No way, man. Oh, so he's describing the United States. We're seeing footage of the Earth, but the United States well, part. Well, we're seeing Florida where they took off from. How come he stopped listening again? He's being oh, so Jesus, because I have to. Th I can't take it, man. <laughs> I know you watched this three times by yourself. I can't watch this with you once. All right, Stop that's talking. it. Locked. If his oxygen is running out, it must be time now. So come on. Come on back into the space. Talking room. takes up oxygen. Do you remember baseball? Yes, sir, I do. Hmm. Yes, sir, I do. Well, in baseball, you must breathe as if your life depended upon it. Yes, sir. A little dipper. Use the space nudge. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Do that nudge like you did on MASH. Character <laughs> actor. <laughs> yes. You're right. He's floating. This movie sucks. <laughs> He's acting. Oh, wait. Oops, sorry. If everything's freezing, how can he bare hand touch stuff? It must be so cold. You are so right. It would rip his fingerprints off. Right. And then he would, yeah. The moisture, the lack of moisture, he would stick to stuff. Totally. Also, I'm wrong, though, he... uh, the moisture is because it's frozen uh, moisture. Um, I'm wrong. But anyway, it's just not realistic any old way. Well, listen, these grown men are wearing space suits. And because, I know because they need the air. But honestly, it's because you can, won't survive in, in real life. What? You're not going to survive a descent, right, without a space suit. It, oh, it, yeah, no, like, no. It's the same thing as the takeoff. Yeah, right. And we complained about the takeoff. And the problem is you have to land, too, and you do the same thing again. Maybe it's I'm such wrong, an like, insult. No, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe... I, the internet didn't tell me that. It only talked about the takeoff. When you land, I don't know that you have to have your. I think it's the same thing, right? You're just, it's the same turf. You got to land, go. I don't know. I, I think you do. So it's okay. the second time this movie is saying fuck you to the audience. Hey, you know, another thing that's weird, like when you land, you're, you flame because you're going into the atmosphere and it's chafing. So right. why doesn't that happen when you're shooting through the... Uh, well, let, here's Charles oh. Pete, uh, astronaut, to mansplain the reason. Okay. Now, they got it, and they were closing the hatch, and our movie is about to end without no. any 
look, what should really happen if this was a blockbuster is they would go, we're home, clap, clap. A whole place would applaud. Then we'd see them coming out of the ship. EJ's mom would be hugging him with none of that. We're going to see none of that. The big party, he gives a speech, none of that. We're just going to cut to him looking at the moon going, what an adventure. That's ridiculous. Why you spoiled the movie for me, Carl? (laughs) I think the movie spoiled the movie for you. Yeah. The movie doesn't even end. Pretend you're floating. Oh, that's right. Piggyback. This is what I do in my car when I don't have an extra, when there's like a kid. Just (laughs) bounce it on the lap. See, but this is like a, a time before See, predators were on our minds i think that they're on our minds too much it's just not realistic that every man is a predator well, I, wasn't even think- I was just thinking like when you when you were a kid and there was like okay. eight adults in the car you wind up sitting on someone's lap <laughs> yeah remember they used to have a phone book for the girls because they're not stupid okay look <laughs> i don't remember now, that what are you talking about turn it on turn it on we are all right it's over that's it yeah. Look at that surfer close. Yeah. I love the shirts. Yeah. Those are shirts. He's this astronaut? I was a stowaway too. My friend was very Nice hat he's got, right? So look, EJ fucks them Love off it. and goes and stares at the moon. Go We're gonna hear. <laughs> no, EJ, you don't have to pretend you're floating here. Oh, look how too big it is. Mike. There's his souvenir, which a, he stole. A terrestrial him. baseball hat. That's not even the lunar team. <laughs> It's not even a lunar team. <laughs> Alphys Monaris United. What big? Now he's remembering with his goofy smile. Dark side of the moon. All right. Sucky. Yeah, was a... John Carradine was in there. White One head. of the Carradine brothers. Carl, what's you think of this movie? I think that as a kid, I liked it because of the fantasy of going to the moon. And as an adult, I saw it and said, this movie doesn't make any fucking sense. It does. It it totally. It's all the rules. It It doesn't capitalize on its own gains. Yeah. I mean, science fiction, you push buttons, especially if it was before the lunar landing, you would have an excuse. Right. Thank you, Kennedy Center, Florida. North American Rockwell Corporation, National Aeronautics Space Administration. Well, yeah. I didn't realize NASA had the word administration in it. More <laughs> film. NASA. That's just 1974. I love this film. It is so wrong. What? Come on. You're not going to see a film this bad. Oh, you loved it because it was it's, bad? Because okay. it's bad. It's bad for I all the great it. reasons. All the right reasons. So, it's awful. Usually, movie. we're watching movies that you suggest. I suggested this one. I do apologize. No, I'm glad you introduced me to So Way to the Moon. I never watched this back in '75 on TV, so I I actually missed out on. Well, I'm this on... much older than you, so that's why that happened. In '75, well, I, mean, I was nine. You were what? I was like '79, '75. Yeah. No, I was '75. I was uh, four years younger than you, so I was probably five. No, no, uh, no, uh, seven. Yeah, that's right. Seven. The math, the, the math yeah. is you were born in 68. 68. So, okay, I was so seven. That's two years. That's only two years. Yeah, two years. Wow. But you know, the inner white boy in me was entertained. It was all about me. And what if I went to the moon? I well, that is what it was. It was yeah. playing to the fantasy of, uh, young people. Uh, yeah, this was being yeah. relatable. It was TV. Uh, I do like the fact like... this movie began with him hopping on the spaceship right off the bat. <laughs> the, his friend, but we got to see in flashback. They they right. took a boat through a tunnel, and that's how they got there. James Bond had the same route in one of his movies, I'm sure. 
the, the spy entrance to the cave canaveral anyway god bless so way to the moon we hope you enjoyed watching this movie yes. as much as we did uh carl <laughs> next week's movie you have the list of films we're doing so far what movie is next week i'm asking well, you it's not an eddie Deason. no well we haven't talked about it uh yes we could do shrinking woman we could do six million dollar man do you want to do six million dollar man uh okay you want to do that it's the okay one in the 80s we don't really have a trailer list as a tv commercial we're gonna watch another tv movie next week another space film another film that takes place in cape canaveral right Um, aren't they from florida no i don't know we'll have to see it i i I, I, Oscar Goldman was in the OSI or some fake CIA thing, right? Where was it, OSI that was located in Florida? No, who knows? Well, we're watching what is it? Bionic Man marries the six six million dollar man marries the bionic woman or meets no, the No, I think woman? it's no, I don't remember. And, okay, I'll go and look. Let me share screen so you can all see how stupid I am. No, I'm I'm stupid. I should at least prepared the show and said carl what movie because we have a list of films and and uh okay here we go share the screen six million dollar man okay add a bit more see this is a bionic woman so they meet it's a crossover the, here it is the return of the oh return okay so of. they've already met so it's the return of the six million dollar man and the bionic mm-hmm. woman I have this the is after to both help. tv shows have ran back in 87 they met up they returned and we'll be able to watch another tv movie which as i always say sorry to rub my eye they're bad on purpose they just want you to watch they don't care they, they don't commercial. it's just so that you watch yeah, um, and then you can sit there and complain about it, but you're still watching it. So we'll be doing that next week. Make sure to check out Mutiny Radio. Oh, look at that! It got the NBC logo. Think there's ads in this one? Yeah, this looks like um, when we saw the masterpiece of murder. I hope there's ads. That would be great if there's ads. Oh my god! Now wait, yeah, this, well, this looks like the whole movie. We just wanted to see a. No, little... this is like two minutes and thirty-seven seconds. Oh yeah. Lee Major. Yeah, it's the commercial for it. Okay, you want to play that? I guess. No, we're watching no, it right now. Wait, wait, wait. Here, I'll give you. Your 80s uh, costume. Boom. Jamie jump. Summer. Jump in slow motion. It's the <laughs> return of slow earrings. motion jumping from buildings. <laughs> Lindsay. Sorry. Lindsay. She got top billing. Lindsay Fagner. This is in stereo. We're available. Do you have a TV set with stereo? No, it's not available. Oh, no, oh, look. I remember this. No. That was the I opening, they, right? That was the opening. We can, can rebuild, rebuild them. them. We can rebuild them. It's going to cost. Hey, oh, we can make them stronger. We can make them faster. It's got the eye socket. Right. Dun, I always dun, said dun, it's dun, a dun. $6 million man. My name is Steve. <laughs> How did they That's- do that, Carl? They don't go backwards. No, not the table. Oh, I remember that. He had an accident. And no, I think that was her. She she had the lucky. Now I get to run happy. Is this a medication ad or what? They're all right. She had super hearing instead of super sight. Yeah, side effects may occur. Right. They showed that same crashing. She's so 80s now. Well, it's a return. It's 87. Yeah, there was a 70s TV show, and now it's the 80s thing. Oscar Richard Goldman. Anderson. We saw him in... We saw him in um, the one with... Um, it was the Buster Keaton story. He was the young Oscar Goldman. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. Executive. He wore a scarf too. All right. Well, we're very excited. We're going to be wearing a sloppy suit wearing Oscar Goldman uh, as he reunites the return of the bionic woman and the $6 million man. Lindsay Wagner headlines this uh, show. That's and right. it's the TV NBC special. I don't even know. I thought they were on ABC. But who knows? Well, we'll I... talk about this next week Yes, on our show, L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Let's watch 
a full length movie on YouTube. Thank you, Mutiny. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Mike. Thank songs. you, audience. Love the production. Thank you, audience. See you next week. Later. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full-length movie on YouTube with Michael 